All right, strap yourselves in because today we're going deep, deep into the world of Money Boy. Money Boy. Money Boy, the German rapper. You might have heard of him, known for his, uh, let's say, unique style. I think I know what you mean. But we're not focusing on the money boy of today. We're going all the way back to 2014. Oh, wow. Okay. Back when he was just starting out to a YouTube interview that's, well, something else. What kind of interview are we talking about? So, get this. It's a blind date interview show, money boy on a blind date. Can you imagine? Blind date with money boy. That's a, that's a recipe for something. Definitely not your typical interview. And that's why we're diving into it, to see what early Money Boy was all about. I'm intrigued already. What's so interesting about this interview, from a Money Boy perspective? Well, for starters, it's not just him talking about his music like you'd expect. It's Money Boy, unfiltered in this awkward, almost surreal setting. Okay, so we're not just getting the polished artist persona. We're seeing something a little more raw. Exactly. And it all starts with his introduction, which is anything but normal how so he doesn't just say hi i'm money boy he throws out a whole list of names mr money boy aka lil young aka mb aka pineapple the fruit dude whoa hold on back up pineapple the fruit dude what's he going for there right it's like he's creating this larger than life persona this caricature of a rapper i see i see yeah he's playing with our expectations of what a rapper should be and maybe just maybe there's some satire in there too like he name drops gucci and prada then calls himself pineapple the fruit dude almost like he's poking fun at the luxury brand obsession in hip-hop you got it it's funny it's confusing and it makes you wonder what is this guy all about he's playing the game that's for sure Keeping us on our toes. And just when you think you're starting to get a handle on him, he drops another bombshell. Tech? Claims he was a professional basketball player before music. A basketball player? Really? Did he play in any leagues? I've never heard of this. Honestly, I couldn't find anything to back that up. But again, it's part of the mystique. Yeah, I get that. It adds to the whole persona, this blurring of reality and performance. And that blurring, it carries on throughout the whole interview. He keeps talking about how smart he is, how he went to university. Emphasizing the brains, the intellect. But then his lyrics, his behavior, it's all so deliberately outrageous, almost like he's playing dumb. It's like he's trying to create this contradiction, right? Yeah. The smart guy acting like a fool. And it keeps you guessing, is he serious? Is he joking? Is this all part of some elaborate act? Yeah, and that tension is fascinating <laughs> because it challenges our assumptions about rappers, about artists in general. For sure. And speaking of tension, you can practically feel it building between Money Boy and the host throughout the interview. How so? Was the host into this whole Money Boy thing? Not really. She seems to get increasingly uncomfortable as he keeps cracking jokes about drugs and partying. Oh, I bet that blind date format probably wasn't helping either. Definitely not. You can tell she's trying to keep things light, appropriate for the channel's younger audience. But Money Boy, he's just doing his thing, unfazed. Yeah, he's got that keeping it real attitude, no matter the situation. And it makes for some incredibly awkward yet captivating moments. It's that clash of personalities, right? <laughs> the buttoned up host versus the wild card rapper. Exactly. And it all comes to a head when Money Boy decides to drop a freestyle rap. Uh-uh. I have a feeling I know where this is going. Let's just say it's not exactly radio friendly, full of explicit lyrics, the kind that make you go, did he? just say that yeah that sounds about right for money boy pushing those boundaries the host she's mortified she even refuses to read the chat comments which are probably blowing up at this point oh yeah i can imagine the chaos in the chat some loving it some hating it it's that divide that strong reaction that money boy always seems to elicit some people see him as a genius satirist using shock value to make a point and others just see him as a crude attention seeker I guess it depends on your perspective. Exactly. And what's so interesting is that Money Boy, he seems aware of this divide. Really? He addresses it in the interview. He does. At one point, he talks about the negative comments, the hate he gets. I'm curious to hear this. What does he say? He's surprisingly chill about it. Says something like, everyone makes mistakes and advocates for tolerance. Huh. That's pretty mature, especially for someone who's deliberately being provocative. I know, right? It's like he's acknowledging that not everyone's going to get him, but he's not letting it get to him. That takes a certain level of self-awareness, for sure. And maybe, just maybe, it's a sign of things to come. The whole cancel culture phenomenon, Money Boy, was kind of ahead of the curve. It's like he's saying, you can try to cancel me, but I'm going to keep doing my thing. And that resilience, that refusal to be silenced, 
it's a big part of what makes him so compelling. All right, so we've got this larger than life persona, this blurring of reality and performance, the clash with the host, the explicit lyrics, the audience reactions. It's a lot to take in. It is, but that's Money Boy in a nutshell. A whirlwind of contradictions, provocations, and undeniable charisma. It sounds like this interview is just the tip of the iceberg. Oh, it definitely is. And that's what makes this deep dive so exciting. We're just getting started. And that's what makes this whole thing so interesting. Mm. right? We're not just watching some random interview. We're seeing the early stages of Money Boy, the phenomenon. Yeah, it's like a time capsule. From a time when the internet was still kind of the Wild West, especially mm. for musicians. And Money Boy, he was out there figuring it out before most people even realized there was something to figure out. It's like he was ahead of the curve with so many things, like... Take online personas. Everyone's got one these days, right? Oh, yeah. Totally curated profiles, perfect pics. It's yeah. all about image management. Exactly. But Money Boy, he was already playing with that back in 2014, crafting this over-the-top character, using these wild lyrics to build a brand. It's like he understood the internet before the internet even understood itself. And he knew how to make people react. Whether they loved him or hated him, they were talking about him. Shock value, right? Uh -huh. It's a powerful tool, especially online. It's like Andy Warhol said, 15 minutes of fame. But Money Boy, he figured out how to stretch those 15 minutes into a career. By being so outrageous, so impossible to ignore, that you couldn't help but pay attention. Exactly. But it's not just about the shock value. There's a real cleverness to what he's doing, a layer of satire that often gets overlooked. You think so? I mean, a lot of his stuff seems pretty surface level. Oh yeah, on the surface, it's all explicit lyrics and crazy antics. But if you listen closely, there's wordplay, there's wit, there's even social commentary hidden in there. Hmm, interesting. So he's not just a clown, he's actually making us think. Exactly. He's operating on multiple levels at once, making you laugh, making you cringe, but also making you question things. I'm starting to see it now. The more we dig into this, the more complex he becomes. And that's what makes him so fascinating to analyze. You can't just dismiss him as a joke. There's a depth there that deserves attention. Okay, I'm sold. You've convinced me there's more to Money Boy than meets the eye. I'm glad to hear it, because the deeper we go, the more interesting it gets. Like, remember that part in the interview where he's lying on the bed? During the Bedtime Whispers segment? Mm. Yeah, that was weird. It was so awkward, so uncomfortable, but it's also kind of brilliant, don't you think? In what way? I just saw it as cringeworthy. Think about it. He's taking this wholesome concept, bedtime whispers, and completely turning it on its head. Oh, I get it. <laughs> like he's playing with our expectations, showing us how ridiculous the whole thing is. Exactly. And the host's reaction, her visible discomfort, it just adds to the brilliance. Yeah, you can practically feel her wanting to crawl under a rock. It's like he's saying, you think you know what this is, but you have no idea. And that unpredictability, it's what keeps us hooked, right? Yeah. You never know what Money Boy's going to do next. Like a car crash. You can't look away, even though you know it's going to be bad. But it's a car crash that also makes you think, makes you question things. Exactly. And that's what separates Money Boy from the rest. He's not just a shock jock. He's a mirror reflecting our own society back at us. Okay, that's a deep thought for a Friday afternoon. Yeah. So he's using all of this, the internet, the persona, the shock value, to hold up a mirror to our culture. Exactly. He's showing us our obsession with celebrity, with shock value, with the constant need for something new and different. And all wrapped up in this absurd, larger-than-life package. It's like he's saying, look at yourselves. This is what you're drawn to. This is what you find entertaining. It's a critique disguised as entertainment, which honestly is kind of brilliant. And it's something that's become even more relevant in recent years with the rise of social media and influencer culture. Everyone's trying to go viral these days to be the next big thing. And Money Boy, he was one of the first to really understand how that game works. He cracked the code, even if he did it by being completely over the top. So we've talked about Money Boy's persona, his use of satire, his understanding of the internet and fame. But what about the music itself? Yeah, we haven't really gotten into the nitty gritty of his actual rapping style. How does that fit into all of this? Does it match the persona or is it something completely different? That's where things get even more interesting. Because on the surface, Money Boy's music can seem repetitive, almost simplistic. Repetitive? In what way? He uses a lot of the same beats, the same phrases, the same flow. So it's all style over substance, just catchy hooks and nothing more. Not necessarily. Because if you listen closely, there's more going on than you might think. There are these subtle shifts in tone, these moments of unexpected brilliance. Like what? Give me an example. It's hard to explain. You just have to hear it. 
It's like he lulls you into a sense of complacency with a repetition, and then he throws in something completely unexpected. A curveball. Something to keep you on your toes. Exactly. It could be a clever wordplay, a sudden change in rhythm, a reference that catches you off guard. So it's a game. He's playing with the listener, daring us to pay attention. I think so. He's not afraid to be repetitive, to use familiar elements, but he always finds ways to subvert them, to twist them into something new and interesting. Okay, I'm starting to get it. It's like he's saying, yeah, I can do the catchy stuff, but I'm also going to make you think. And that's part of his genius. He's not just appealing to our base instincts. He's also engaging our intellect, even if we don't realize it at first. So it's not just about the beats and the rhymes. It's about the layers of meaning, the hidden depths. Exactly. And that's what makes him so rewarding to listen to. It's not just mindless entertainment. There's something more substantial there. Okay, so we've established that Money Boy is a master of manipulating the internet, pushing buttons, and crafting this larger-than-life persona. But how do people actually react to all of this? I mean, we saw the host struggling with his antics, but what about the wider audience? What do people think of Money Boy? Is he loved, hated, or something in between? That's where things get really interesting. Because as we mentioned earlier, there's this huge divide in how people perceive Money Boy. Some people absolutely love him. They see him as a genius, a comedic visionary. Others find him utterly repulsive, talentless, and offensive. It's like he's a cultural Rorschach test, revealing more about the viewer than the artist himself. I like that analogy. What you see in Money Boy says more about your own values, your own sense of humor, your own tolerance for the unconventional. Exactly. And that's what makes him so fascinating to study. He's not just making music, he's sparking conversations, he's challenging norms, he's forcing us to confront our own biases. It's like he's holding up a mirror to society and saying, look at yourselves, look at what you find funny, what you find offensive, what you find confusing. What does that say about you? And that's a powerful thing for an artist to do, to not just entertain, but to provoke, to make people think, to challenge the status quo. It's like he's a walking, talking embodiment of the internet itself unpredictable, unfiltered, and constantly evolving. You never know what you're going to get, but you know it's going to be interesting. And that's ultimately what makes this deep dive so rewarding. Yeah. We're not just analyzing an artist. We're exploring a cultural phenomenon, a reflection of our own times. We've covered a lot of ground in this deep dive, from Money Boy's early career to his impact on the music industry to his complex relationship with his audience. But I'm curious, what are some of the key takeaways you want our listeners to walk away with? I think the biggest takeaway for me is that Money Boy is, well, he's more than just a rapper, isn't he? Yeah, it's hard to put him in a box. He's a performer, a satirist, a commentator on, well, on internet culture, really. And he knows how to use the internet, how to get a reaction, that's for sure. Oh, absolutely. He's not some accidental viral star. Yeah. This is calculated, intentional. And it goes back to that question, right? Is he a genius? or just a provocateur. Maybe both. Maybe neither. Yeah. I don't know, it's tough to say. It's too simple, right, to tr try and label him like that. Yeah, he's too complex, too slippery. He's always changing, evolving, doing something new. And that's what keeps him relevant. Even all these years later, he's still pushing boundaries. He's still making us think, making us question what we think we know about music, about art, about the internet itself. It's like he's saying, art doesn't have to be comfortable. It can be weird. It can be challenging. And sometimes that's exactly what we need. Something to shake things up, to make us see the world differently. So if you're looking for an artist who's going to challenge you, make you laugh, make you think, Money Boy's your guy. <laughs> Just be prepared for a, for a wild ride. Yeah, you never know what you're going to get. But it's guaranteed to be unforgettable. And that's what makes him such a perfect subject for this deep dive. He's a puzzle, a mystery, a force of nature all wrapped up in one. Even after spending all this time dissecting his work, I still feel like we've only scratched the surface. There's always more to uncover, more to analyze, more to be challenged by. And that's the beauty of it, right? It's a never-ending journey of discovery. So I guess the final message here is, don't be afraid of the unconventional. Don't shy away from the weird, the confusing. Embrace it. Explore it. Let it challenge your assumptions. Dig deeper. Ask questions. Figure out what you think what you believe. And most importantly, have fun with it. Art should be enjoyable, even when it's making us uncomfortable. So go out there, check out Money Boy, see what all the fuss is about. You might be surprised at what you find. And hey, maybe you'll even be inspired to create a little chaos of your own. And that brings us to the end of our deep dive into the world of Money Boy. It's been a wild ride, that's for sure. Thanks for joining us. And until next time, 
keep exploring, keep questioning, keep an open mind. Yep. 